Jalen Joseph Hands, born February 12, 1999. Today's feature, Leaving High School, was described as a dynamic playmaker with tons of upside potential, but not polished, so may struggle in a few areas. Sounds about right because at the time, potential on Hands was high. He met the height standard as well as athletically he had what the game was looking for, the big time pedigree being from UCLA, and he even had the modern day name with a little ring to it. While YouTube and draft sites were super excited about guys like Trey Young and Colin Sexton, and rightfully so, Jalen Hands was in the conversation right along with them or not far behind. He was rated the fourth best point guard of his class, rated above four future NBA players. He was for the most part expected to go early in the first round at one point. Then teams got him in workout and only one believed in him enough to take him 56th overall, five spots from being undrafted. He and a first round pick were exchanged for the 27th pick in the draft and Hans began his career playing with the Nets affiliate team in the G League. Even though he'd have a solid year in the G for the Long Island Nets, he wouldn't receive a call up that season, or any season for that matter, heading overseas early and never looking back since. While Sexton and Trey Young became young stars in the league, Colin of course was approaching star level until his injury and then trade out of Cleveland, and Young, a household name by 2023, weren't separated by much as amateurs, right behind Young and both four star recruits. I like Jalen Hans' potential because unlike Sexton, his size was much better, meaning he could defend more than one position height-wise if he had to, and it helped him appear more athletic as well, whereas Colin had bounce but had short arms and easier to shoot over. Unlike Young, Hans had size, athleticism, and game you'd expect to be perfect for the NBA. Trey Young is great, but no one thought in a few years he'd separate this much from Hans, one an NBA All-Star perennially, the other an average overseas player that although drafted, never played a game in the league. Especially when I thought in a good situation Jalen Hans could be a solid point guard for a team to build around. He was considered a one and done prospect going to UCLA, but struggled into demotion his freshman year to the six man role, then second on the team in scoring and leader in assists year too. But the Bruins failed to make the tournament and Hans's name continued to slide down mock drafts one spot after another. He was supposed to be one of the top next up new era point guards, but for these reasons, that didn't happen. Let's talk about it. Salute to Hoodie 5 for this request. It's your boy JC Stunnick Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Jalen Hands is a 6'3 point guard from San Diego, California that began his high school career as one of the more anticipated for the famed modern day high school, winning his league's player of the year and also a championship as a freshman. He'd attempt to transfer after his second year to Foothills High, but found himself against county rules and had to then transfer to prep school before finishing his high school career at Foothills. Hans was a star his senior year, with the consensus he was going to one day be an important pick in some year's draft. He averaged 29 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists, making the McDonald's All-American team in the process. He'd commit to UCLA and had the space to come in and be whatever he wanted. Stun number one being taken in the second round. Historically, the NBA second round is one you'd be better off avoiding altogether. Although there have been players that excelled out the second round and a few do it seemingly every year. It's certainly not the be-all end-all, but one thing's for sure, it will test the player in every way to make sure he has what it takes to play in the league. Drafted in the first round earns you four years to figure it out on somebody's team, but being taken in the second round, you could be out the league the very next day. Or like hands, be taken by a team who doesn't value you, then trade you to another team with no real opportunity for you then possibly out altogether within a year of the draft. It's a doggy dog world and only the ones that could prove they were dogs in the first place who have good representatives that can help them into a good situation career-wise and live in the gym, making up for development time teams that passed on them felt they lacked. 
Hence, due to the newly updated player association rule, which says each team are allowed to have two players on their roster on two-way contracts, meaning they would predominantly play in the G League, but allow to freely help their team in any way the team sees fit, fell under these circumstances. They can be called up to join their NBA team at any time, but Hans was never called up. He averaged 11.3 points, 3.5 assists, 3 rebounds, and 1 steal per game, but the Nets were too busy worrying about their high-profile Big 2 and soon Big 3 in KD, Kyrie, and eventually Harden that they didn't have time to develop Hans, who wasn't at all perfect, or should I say polished enough, but could have been a solid rotational player if in the right situation. With Hall of Fame stars on the team, everyone else are spot up, role guys, and Jalen's game is more in need of having the ball and control in his hands for him to show better than he can say. In November 2020, he was traded to the Pistons who waived him July 2021. He didn't play for the team not one game. Had he landed in a better situation coming in, he could have polished those skills and be everything the NBA was looking for from point guards at the time. If only a team that needed him took him and were serious about his potential. Stunt number two didn't offer more. Another huge reason Jalen Hands fell short of his NBA goals was because what it takes as a player to make it there, in his case, wasn't worth it for NBA teams. I try to preach this all the time, you can't expect a franchise giving out millions to send them your way without having enough to convince them you're their guy. Hans was always a taller guard with explosive athleticism and popular on social media hubs like YouTube and Instagram. As a scorer, Hans would have needed another year in college to fully be confident and competent in this area because 14 a game is cool in your freshman year, but not in year two, even though he had rank on the team and ended up their second leading guy. 14 is not elite scoring, although I've seen many players come in and not have the most talked about freshman season and still get buckets in the league, but it still doesn't change. 14 is not like 18, 19, or 20. As far as being a lead guard that could get his teammates involved, he did average over 6 assists, which is his most promising stat, along with shooting high 30% from 3 point range. But after Summer League and seeing him up close, teams gave up on his playstyle as he just didn't offer much other than scoring, and as a scorer, he just wasn't elite. He was a solid shooter, coming into the league at 37% for his college career, but there's tons of shooters better than him in the draft and G League that do more all around for their team to win. As far as a leader on the floor, he also struggled as his personality is more lead by example and not the loudest in the room, which as a second round pick can be hard for a rookie to step in and be good at. Stun number three, erratic and out of control. These were words used to describe some of the weaknesses of Jalen Hands going into the draft. Scouts felt the same things that helped him become who he was in high school were the same things that made him speed his way into bad passes, offensive fouls, and bad decision making on his shot attempts. He also struggled on defense, losing track of his man for easy backdoor layups or crowd raising slam dunks. A lot of his turnovers were because the ball for some reason would just slip from his hands on dunk attempts or finishing around the rim. His decision making issue is one he admitted to and understood he needed to work on in order for an NBA team to take him seriously and make him an important piece of their future. This didn't work as by the time he improved on it, there were multiple guys putting up better numbers and younger that weren't making mistakes from simple plays and good defensive foundations on the other end. Ever heard the phrase million dollar move 10 cent finish? This could also be used to describe Jalen Hands on offense. All in all, Jalen Hands is now enjoying his overseas tour, signing in Greece last season and 23-24. He's a good player, I think in the right situation, could flourish in the league even today, but unfortunately he landed on teams that were the worst for a ball dominant guy like him. He was a high school sensation, then after time and for these reasons, he fell out the race possibly forever.
salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, stunted growth, and I'm out.